We're counting down the five hottest stories of the week. We just tackled Amazon's big win in a battle over labor. Story number two tonight, well, it's the record week on Wall Street. Stocks hitting all-time highs. The Dow Jones Industrial Average climbing more than 200 points today to end the week with a nearly 2% gain in the S&P 500. And NASDAQ doing even better on the week. So let's talk markets, guys. Victoria, uh, what do you make of this week's activity, especially as we're leading into earnings season, if you can believe it, for the first quarter beginning next week? Yeah, so, I mean, we anticipated that we might see a bump in the market this week. We know the labor market report came out on Friday and the equity markets were closed for that. So we anticipated with such a strong number on Friday that we would see um, some positive news. And really, all the movement that we've seen in these equity markets, it's really been built on optimism and the reopening trade. And we have this really heavy support from central banks um, with the market. And so this soft data has really been leading the market. We've been waiting for some of the hard data to kind of catch up with it. And we're starting to see that, right? The labor report was one. Um, we had manufacturing numbers this week that were really strong. We get retail sales next week, which I anticipate will be really strong, um, getting a bounce back from February when we had some of the weather issues going on. But the question is, what is the catalyst that we're going to have to move this market significantly one way or the other. I'm not sure what that catalyst is going to be at this point. Perhaps it is earnings um, that starts next week. You're right. I can't believe that we're already at this point again. Um, but we're going to have companies actually giving guidance um, that we haven't had over the last couple quarters. That should be interesting. But expectations are pretty high. So I would really be watching earnings and see if that starts to shift the market and shift the bond market because we haven't had a huge reaction from the bond market even with some of the really good numbers over the last week. Delano, how much of the, of the market do you think at this point has really priced in some of these lofty expectations and how hard will it be for corporate America to beat them? Well, Leslie, that's a great question. I think the backdrop, backdrop as Victoria's mentioned, is, is super strong for investors right now. One, we had the Fed uh, and Jerome Powell say, hey, even though we've come through a lot of the worst, um, you know, the, the quantitative easing, the, the tools being used are still going to be in effect. Investors also have so much, a lot of stimulus, extra savings, money supply is still out there. I do think, um, as mentioned, earnings will be, will be really important, especially for, for more of the reopening companies where we're seeing, okay, what is the plan going forward? I think it's actually a really great catalyst for the, the companies that had, one, benefited during the pandemic um, in the sense of, you know, they, the high-tech companies, that were, the tools that we're being able to use during this time. And, but now they're actually being able to say, hey, this is our shift to a reopening and what we're doing during these times. So, you know, I've seen a lot of uh, talk in uh, different areas of, that it's the rolling 20s. I'm not going that far as far as <laughs> I wasn't around then, but I, I don't know what happened then. But, but I'm, saying, I'm seeing a lot of good things for investors. Volatility is actually down as well. And so that's a good thing for obviously for long-term investors, as we know, retail traders, sometimes we look, they look for a little bit of volatility. Volatility has been down. That's been a good thing for the market. Uh, Tim, what do you think are some of the significant headwinds at this point in time? We've seen the optimism from the Fed. We are, you know, optimistic about earnings. We are optimistic about reopening. You know, what are we missing in the broader picture uh, that could kind of come back to haunt us? Well, and, and by the way, you know, we didn't we didn't have a Fed like this in the roaring 20s either. That's why we may be ahead of the game. Well, the, the first thing is that the market um, and this is a short term uh, trading focus, but we haven't been this overbought on the S&P since that blow off top of September. So in terms of sentiment uh, and consumer confidence, you can make an argument that it's hard to get a lot higher here. Yet had, had an ISM services this week that was almost bombastic. It was the highest we had going back to 1997. So at a time when the labor market is strengthening, I think Victoria is absolutely right on that retail sales number. The question is, what, what have we priced in here? And, and I look to me, the fact is, and it's another great point Victoria made just in terms of the guidance here. Um, I, I think you get to a place where um, at some point when companies, you know, we, we gave a mulligan for 2021, mm -hmm. um, largely giving some mulligan to 22. But normalized earnings is a time to sell this market. This is a market that's overbought. I'm not running for the hills. Uh, I'm telling you that uh, the, the dollar strength that was the preceding kind of three or four weeks before giving it back is something else to worry about. If this economy is as strong uh, as we think and you start to see some some mismatch in, in the U.S. growth dynamics versus the rest of the world, I'd be concerned about the dollar. Uh, I'm concerned with the VIX at 16. And ultimately, that, that to me tells me we're not really pricing in a lot of risk. So potentially valuation in and of itself is a major headwind just to this current market environment.
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.